Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Andrea. Good Massimo. Thank you for coming, for adding me to this new GMI webinar. Waiting just one minute, I see that there are other people connecting. So maybe if you can wait just one minute, we'll leave other people coming. This is a new GMI webinar dedicated to the application for safety relays. And uh, so this is pretty new for us. I hope also this is a good, uh, interesting uh, webinar for you too, because we can share also, say, here some experience in safety relays applications. And uh, so we have some slides dressing that uh, we can uh, share with you in a minute. Okay, I don't see any other, any more people. Uh, so we can start. A uh, few, just few things. As, uh, if you want to make questions, you have just to use a Q&A button, not the chat, because the chat is disabled. And uh, so the Q&A we can answer during the uh, webinar, not uh, all time. Of course, we cannot stop our presentation, but we can take some uh, break and uh, answer to your questions. So don't hesitate. Your uh, question will be answered during uh, the webinar, or maybe if I'm um, maybe complicated, we can uh, answer later on. Okay. So this is our presentation speakers today. So there is Massimo Pagani, our program manager in GEM International, and nine year experience in technical support, and uh, it's a more than 20 years experience in uh, uh, retail development of device for electronics. He's a, a assist our customer, is also a functional safety engineer. Myself, Andrea, I'm a Global Account Manager and I have uh, more or less 20 experience in automations and uh, sales organization for automation, uh, uh, machine automation and the process automation and also structural safety engineer. So we go to the, say, oh, just uh, talk about a little bit about uh, what is GM International, that's called GMI. So, GEM International Design Engineer and uh, device dedicated to the uh, hazardous cell application, uh, let's say critical application where skill is required. So, um, for main automation package for DCS application, ESD, foreign gas, BMS, EPS, and so on. Market, uh, most important markets are oil and gas, chemical, petrochemical, fertilizer, mining, food, and so on. You have uh, more or less 40 experience uh, and uh, we produce completely in uh, our facility in uh, Italy. But we have a global presence in five continents as well. This is the, say, the list of products. And uh, you can see that we produce uh, three safe barriers or so isolators, safety relays, uh, seal isolators, safety power supplies, multiplexer, termination boards for DCS uh, manufacturers, and hard multiplexer, surge protection indicators. And those the last bullet is uh, our functional safety manual uh, for application, for safety application. It's a user-friendly manual that with a lot of, uh, let's say, of example, how to calculate the loop, uh, the seal level for the loop, how to, uh, design the product, which product you have to use, and so on. We're proud to say that we distribute it free for all our customers, so don't hesitate to send us an inquiry and we will uh, send one book. It's available either in a paper and uh, electronic format. So uh, also our goals, of course, is to uh, produce, uh, let's say, realize real product that must adhere to the most critical applications that therefore we have product being tested from different uh, accreditation bodies and um, we are also certified for functional safety management and CL3 and our systematic quality is CL3. 
Also, we will develop a lot of new solutions, new products, and we reinvest all our, let's say, the part of our to know in R&D. We also provide five years warranty for all our products as well. Uh, as we say, we produce in Italy, we have a state of our technology, complete traceability, full testing, and uh, really automatized manufacturing process. And uh, some numbers, uh, eight subsidiaries in all, let's say, majority, major, let's say, continents and the countries. And we have also distributors all over the world, 200 people, local total staff, functional safety courses, inspectors, and also different installations in all continents. Some of our customers are here. You can see we are present in all main system vendors. In, uh, through the APC also that we can specify the products uh, and uh, of course the product will be used from different OEA customers and uh, we have the approved from different of course uh, end users. So we finish, I finish my part for the moment and we, let's go to the real application where Massimo is involved majority but uh, uh, we want to start uh, if you don't mind with uh, 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 Paul so let's uh, let's let's start with all please uh, take the time and answer to the, those simple questions at the end we share with you the results for that maybe it's uh, also interesting so what type of do you usually use Okay, majority of you says that uh, choose both. Uh, stop the polling. Use both, and uh, some of you use only standard relays. That's fine. We can uh, give you some tips uh, why it's important to use the smart relays. Okay, Matthew, it's your turn now. Okay, thank you, Andrea, for your introduction. We start uh, with our presentation. The Scope of today's presentation is to specifically present smart relay and their application fields based on the experience collected by GM International over years. Uh, but uh, what are the specific points of today's? At the first point of today's presentation, what are the smart relay and what are the specific model of GM International portfolio? After that, it's important to understand uh, why choose uh, a smart relay compared to a standard safety relay. And finally, where smart relay are used and what are the typical application. In uh, the specific case, we will examine it application as uh, normally energized on oil bulbs strobe beacons for fire and gas application, dual tone sounders for fire and gas application, high availability double coil solenoid valves, and uh, single phase load interruption solenoid valves. Finally, Andrea gives uh, our conclusion about the uh, uh, topic of today. Well, uh, next. What is a smart relay? The smart relay is a relay that guarantees a specific safety function, like a typically safety, uh, safety relay, but in addition, it has the ability to perform a complete field diagnostics. For complete, uh, complete field diagnostics, we mean a diagnostics that includes a complete constantly monitor of line and load functions in both operating condition of the reel on and off status. In fact, the diagnostic of a smart relay is able to monitor the functional parameters of the field devices and the line, both to know 
in real time the health status of the loop in the condition of load energization and uh, as a predictive function to know whether in the event of a request for interpretation the device in the field will activate correctly this is a very important especially in a fire and gas safety system uh, we can say that uh, smart relay combine the basic functionality of safety relay with a complete line and load diagnostic Next. Specifically, we, we will take as an example the most complete of GM International's smart relay range called D5294S. Model with on board the most complete and fully programmable diagnostic symmetry. Uh, this model is suitable for both normally energized and normally de-energized load with the possibility of completely configuring the diagnostic section. When used uh, with the normally energized loads under normal condition, the contacts of the relay are closed. They open on demand to bring the load to its safe state, load off in this case, for example, uh, uh, a valve that needs to be de-energized. Next, the particular composition of uh, the internal concept arranged in a matrix consisting of two concepts in parallel with each other, plus two other concepts in parallel also with each other and placed in series with the load makes the D5294S robust to a single relay fault. In other words, even in, pre in presence of a single relay fault, for example, when uh, uh, contact welded, the D5294S is still able to satisfy the safety function. Uh, for example, to open the load on demand. Next. In addition, thanks to the contact matrix, the D5294X exhibits high availability. In fact, if a contact opens by an accident, the parallel contact redundancy allows the module to continue supply the load. The loop is still under service. When used with the normally de-energized loads, under normal condition, the contacts are open. They are closed on demand to bring the load to its safe state, load on in this cable. Uh, for example, the beacon lights up. Even in this case, the contact the particular configuration of the contact in parallel in this case makes the D5294S robust to a single relay fault. In other words, even in presence of a single relay fault, in this case, the contact does not close, does not, does not able to close the contact, the D5294S is still able to satisfy the safety function. For example, in this case, uh, to close the load on the main. We can say that uh, the fault of a single contact of the matrix is not sufficient to cause a dangerous fault. The D5294S exhibits, even in the in case of normally de energized uh, loads, high availability. In fact, if a contact closed by an accident, for example, uh, a fault due to uh, vibration, the serious contact redundancy prevents the load from energizing unintentionally. And uh, two different uh, safety functions coexist inside the smart relay. 
The first and also the main function consists in the input to output or coil to contact activation deactivation. This is the typical function of a circuit relay, which upon request is able to drive a load applied to, to it in a safe state. The second one is the diagnostic function. In fact, it provides fuel measures, voltage, current, resistance, or leakage of the load also through Modbus protocol, and it can activate the activate two-pole dry contact. Also, uh, the smart relay is equipped with the fault relay, and any anomalies uh, can be acquired through Modbus protocol. The smart relay is also available for installation in the Zarus area, to be precise in, the, in zone two, division two. And we can also say that the main function call to contact is certified C3, while the diagnostics is certified C2. Well, uh, let's analyze the diagnostic section of this smart relay, checking what this functionality allows us to monitor. The smart relay is able to detect uh, a line and the load fault, both in the energized relay condition and in the energized relay condition. What can, uh, what can we monitor when the relay is in on state? For example, uh, a typical application could be the monitoring of normally energized bars. Well, when the load is activated, the D524S is able to monitor continuously the voltage applied to the load, the current flowing through the load, and also internal coil integrity. This specific model of smart relay has the possibility to perform an internal diagnostic of its coil and in the event of a fault, report this fault to the system. What can we monitor when the, energy, uh, when the relay is in the off state? Um, typical fire and gas application where we need to know the health of the field loop. Well, the, when the load is deactivated, the D5294S is able to monitor continuously the power supply voltage, the load resistance, and in this case, the leakage from the load to the ground. In this case, the relay can monitor the leakage resistance between the earth and the load. Well, uh, let's see specifically uh, how the relay can communicate with the system. How and what are the ways in which a smart relay can communicate with the safety system? Smart relay can report the field status to the system in several ways. First, the two-fold contact can be acquired by a system digital input card. This is the typical way which implies the use of a DCS with a dedicated digital input card, where the status of a contact call a pulse is monitored by the system. The second method is uh, if uh, the system digital output uh, card driving the smart relay support pulse testing, the fold in the field can even be mirrored directly to the DO card without the need of an additional digital input card. This, this feature will be investigated in more details uh, later. Complete, further, the complete diagnostic information can be retrieved through Modbus Multidrop RS485 protocol. If a Modbus master is available on the system side, remember that through the Modbus protocol, the relay can be constantly monitored and also configured remotely. 
And the last, the fault on bus can also be acquired by a system digital import card. The fault on bus is normally used when a cumulative report uh, from many modules is required. The second point of presentation of today uh, is what are the reasons that make us prefer a smart relay to a regular safety relay. Why going for smart relays? Nowadays, full diagnostic is typically required along the rule loop. However, many widespread systems do not support diagnostic inside their DO cards. Second, smart relay make diagnostic available to systems that do not support it. Many modern systems uh, do support the O diagnostics. However, in many applications, they cannot directly drive the load because they are voltage and current limited, typically no more than 500 milliamp at 24 volt DC. And again, when the load valve, beacon, sound, etc., require more than 24 volt and or more than 500 milliamp, relays are necessary. Yet, when using standard relays, the DO diagnostic pulse testing dies at the relay coils and cannot reach the load in the field. As opposite to that, smart relays can go beyond the typical voltage current system limitation while keeping the full load diagnostic. Even if a modern system can perform load diagnostic, their capabilities may be limited. For instance, her leakage monitor may not be supported or extreme load, for example, beacons, may always be reported as an open circuit to the system. Mass, uh, smart Relay may offer a solution to extend the DO diagnostic capabilities. Well, uh, Smart Relay may offer a solution to extend the DO diagnostic capability. In the the following slide, we briefly see the model and the diagnostic capabilities of the GM International Relay seen so far. In the following slide, we see in ascendant order of diagnostic functionality, a series of GM International Relay, all highly available to the process. From the D5094S, uh, 5095S, 50, safety relay without field diagnostic, but with high availability to the process, thanks to the internal contact matrix. The D5096S and the D5097S uh, smart relay, uh, effective cost, which combine a complete load and light diagnostic with preset value. And the last, uh, to the series of fully configurable smart relays with the possibility of modbus communication, detection of an internal fault relating to its coil, and monitoring of the earth load leakage resistance. But uh, let's see in more detail what is the mirroring function on a smart relay. Next. This function allows us to reflect information relating to the field fault directly to the supervised DO card of a PLC, both in the off state through the pulse test system and in on state by reading the static return of current. The DO card of a PLC system can detect the information relating to the field fault. This system, through an uh, upward impedance variation of the relay into circuit, allows the supervised DO card to see the fault in the field. This system allows considerable saving in engineering cost 
and as uh, it allows us not to use a dedicated car, digital input card for this book also. Uh, Andrea, uh, I think we have another uh, polls for our attendee. Yes. An answer to that. We show some uh, features for safety relay for the smart relays. So have a look at that. Maybe you can uh, type what is your preference of that. Just one minute. It is also multiple uh, choice, so you can choose one or more answer. Well, until you say that uh, all features are interesting, I agree, I agree, of course. Okay, maybe another few seconds. Okay, and polling. I, I think uh, fault mirroring uh, alarm contact out are the most uh, important uh, for you. Also, mod bus uh, and trazor computer. Okay, so. Uh, we can go to now, thank Massimo to this uh, introduction. We just so show you the product okay, now, not the application, but uh, it was very important from our point of view because uh, uh, now you can understand better uh, what uh, are the capabilities and uh, now you can see the real application based on those capabilities. So, a uh, real world application. So, we try to summarize what is the uh, real world. So, most of our applications are for salt, solenoid valves, normal energized, strong beacons in the fire a gas application, or, for example, are really common in these applications. And also, we have an application with uh, dual tone sounders. Uh, for firing gas, where the sound are uh, dual tone for different alarms, uh, alarm speaker, of course. And uh, the other application is for high availability dual coil, double coil to renal valves that is very used, very frequently used. Now we will see show how to use it. And also, the last one is a single phase load interruption renal. So here we have an application with, uh, that we did. Uh, we did. We didn't did. Of course, we just saw the device, but uh, we studied with the customer how to solve this application, and has been made with a uh, uh, safety PLC, the Delta Lucis from Emerson. In this case, we have the solenoid valve, and the application is the ESD emergency shutdown system. So basically, uh, there is a power supply. In this case, well, 110 volts that is a uh, uh, power in the relay, of course, in the system that is, uh, and the system is driving the solenoid valve through the relay. And of course, the diagnostic is, uh, uh, let's say, mirrored or resend to the system. And uh, the application is a uh, lucky here. So I have my solenoid valve, it's a, we say that it's a non energized so off slide state. Is not really important, it's important in normal conditions. So, the system uh, uh, digital output is driving the, the, out the, the relay, and the relay is uh, uh, closing its contact and uh, make the, the flow go through the valve. So, that is the, the standard, uh, uh, let's say, normal condition energized. Okay. So, let's go to the what. You can see what happens in normal and the safe state. So safe state means that I'm opening the moment, say, de-energize my contact 
the relay itself, we will open all the four relays. You see the methods are very important because the four relays that are driving my load, and that's uh, important for also for the safety, but also for the mobility, as uh, Massimo showed in some uh, slides. And but they can have in this case some uh, fault, and the fault can be the uh, open circuit and the impedance, of course. And uh, again, the normal condition that open circuit from a basically, if I don't have a smart relay, then the just be relay a mirror and say, I cannot uh, um, I can, I don't know that there is a fault, but uh, uh, and then my system is always activated, I don't see any fault really on my application. Uh, why the smart relay in this case can detect the fault and can send this fault to the system digital input. That's one application. The same I can have because of this uh, special day used by the customer, I can have the detection through the, uh, through the mode bus uh, uh, interface. So you see that is uh, uh, a little bit different because mode bus is also asking, is asking to the uh, to the RS45 um, what is happening and the last is that load is open. Uh, I would like to um, focus this difference uh, to you because it's very important because of the fault and digital out or digital input message can just uh, detect that there is a fault but it cannot discriminate which kind of fault is it. Uh, why the mode bus uh, is uh, very very useful because uh, there is a specific register for each fault and uh, uh, I can know that there is uh, a fault in this case which is the open circuit. So I can detect also uh, less the open circuit, the short circuit, and in this case the short circuit is detected immediately, and immediately means that the the fault is reported to the digital input uh, to the DCS. In this case, I require the uh, digital input to the ticket card, but if I'm using the mode bus interface as uh, the, the earlier uh, fault, here I can detect exactly that there is a, a short circuit on my lot. So this is a uh, we have some application like that, but just this one uh, is uh, the only one which is um, animated. Uh, but just to give you more introduction to the application. It's a little bit long, but I hope you like it. Hope you like it. So I can have also as for uh, open circuit, the short circuit, also the fault for the power supply. So fault for the power supply means that uh, my power supply or the load is failing. My relay is okay, but uh, I have a fail and my uh, uh, valve is not uh, working properly. So also in this case, I have the same digital input that is detecting that fault. Uh, I know that this fault, also in this case, don't know which kind of fault is it, unless I'm using, as uh, in the previous, the Modbus uh, solution. In our product range, we do have some uh, relays with Modbus and some relays without. So uh, people can decide what relays to use uh, in that case. And for some uh, DCIs uh, support uh, Modbus, some not. But uh, in some applications, Castle doesn't want to use Modbus and some other yes, but it's just uh, up to the cut. But you know, there is some, uh, some differences. I have, can have another fault, which is the internal coil fault, okay? So the internal coil means one relay of our can fail, one relay out of four can uh, fail. That is, uh, uh, means that the maximum is still available because I have the, the second one in the matrix, which is working properly, so the circuit is closed. But I can know that there is uh, this specific internal coil fault. I know that uh, Maybe for the next, if I will have a next failure uh, for the other coil, I can uh, have out my relay out of service. So I know that at least I have to repair or replace the uh, relay. 
So we have seen some application uh, for, for with Emerson DCS, but uh, we did also this one with um, in this case with the DCS is not uh, a safety system; it's just a process control system, and uh, where it's not uh, really let's say uh, critical like the previous, but is also very important. Is has been made with ABB DCS and uh, with the MEDC Beacon, and this is for firing gas application. As in previous, we have the same, uh, say, uh, architecture. Okay, and that is uh, the uh, application where I have my folds that uh, are the. In this case, I can detect the as in previous power supply folds open or short circuit for the load, earth leakage, and internal loads. Okay, this is for parent gas, means that uh, in case of need, I have to activate my load. Okay. Uh, in this case, the system, uh, the um, fault is uh, mirrored to the digital out. So the system digital out, I can repeat to you maybe, is also important is uh, detecting that there is a variance variation on the impedance of the digital autos because there is uh, something which is wrong. In this case, detecting as a default. Uh, in this case, CAS is not using Modbus, is not using additional digital input card, it's just uh, uh, detecting everything through the digital output. Another application has been made with another DCS from uh, Schneider Electric, Foxborough, uh, and with the sounder, and this is for firing gas. Uh, it's also important, it's a little bit uh, complicated here, but it, it is a dual tone sounder. So dual tone means that uh, to uh, uh, detect the alarms and uh, make the sounder uh, active uh, in two different uh, levels, it means that I have a level for uh, the normal alarm, another level for high alarm. In this case, I use two relays to uh, to perform the functions. It's uh, complicated, but it's uh, feasible, of course, with uh, our solutions. So, uh, and uh, the fault are uh, detectable, uh, the power supply faults are the open short circuit and also the internal coil fault. We say the only T5294 because only 5294, 5295 uh, is uh, able to perform or able to detect the internal coil fault. Other not. So also when you choose a relay, also this is a uh, a way to decide if you use one product or another. Uh, there is one question, Massimo, maybe from uh, Nothing B. We can stop for a while. So, can you please tell me when I can get the certificate of this webinar and day before webinar, please? Oh, this is not a uh, dedicated say, to the presentation. Uh, we cannot uh, we cannot release any certificate. Sorry, from for, for the webinar, and uh, because it is uh, it's a free webinar, so we don't know if we are there or not. We understand that is uh, something that is not. Uh, well, on, on the other hand, if you like it, it is most uh, available for you and for the others. We can. Uh, uh, relies on demand webinars where you can attend, and in that case, we can release some uh, dedicated uh, certificate or say, uh, report from us that you attend the you participate in that webinar. Thank you. Okay, so let me go through. So we have another few minutes, of course, so we can go. Then we have an uh, uh, application with the application with the uh, Yokogawa ProSafe RS, so the safety PLCs. And this is a dual double coil valve. Also very important because, uh, especially in uh, um, 
so we have to talk about uh, you talk about the redundancy and so on and also the valve can be redundant okay you can have an application with a valve and with the, uh, there is a dual coil so dual coil means that the valve can be activated only with one coil so the failure of one coil can be uh, is not enough to stop the pro processing the, the function so in this case um, is uh, is important to detect that there is a failure because you can anticipate the problem and replace the valve or make maintenance or do what is necessary but uh, it's important to detect that uh, that failures and uh, by this uh, uh, 5294 the relay is always then that one because it's most complete is uh, you can perform that uh, you can detect that failures so there is a uh, beside the standard power supply fault open short circuit internal coil fault also the valve coil fault can be detected so what is happening that the relay is it detected the coil the resistance is a uh, is a changing because one coil failed and uh, I, I can uh, say report that alarm uh, to the system uh, in the large uh, in the large compound that those uh, dual coil are often used uh, but it's very difficult uh, to detect the fault okay and uh, especially if you Put a relay, relay, standard relays. Uh, we have also standard relay in our portfolio that can do not detect any kind of fault. So you never know if uh, your valve is uh, completely safe or not really won't fail or maybe is out of order. Uh, but uh, with uh, this relay, that is, uh, I repeat you, is uh, really configurable. So you can uh, set the threshold of this coil in this case that has to generate an alarm. So there are different values depending on the manufacturers, but you can set the level of, uh, um, of the impedance, internal impedance of the coil that has to be detected and uh, monitored. Uh, let me see if we have another question, maybe from Casa, Massimo. Yes, yes, Andrea, we have a question. What is the comparative cost in percentual between standard relay and smart relay? Oh, this is my more my <laughs> my field than yours, Massimo. So, comparative cost. Uh, let's say that uh, really uh, smart smart the biggest the most important can cost uh, three four times that the standard relays. Okay, uh, that is the value. Basically, a smart relay costs at around double. Okay, but if you want to have more functionality, like mode bus, you want to have the uh, the coil, uh, the internal coil uh, detection, so on, that costs uh, cost a little bit more. But let's say that uh, standard relays compared to the say low profile uh, smart relay, the difference is uh, double. So, Double cost, 100% more. Okay, this is the answer. Thank you, Andrea. What is the rise of power and current consumption of smart relays versus standard relay? That's but, your fear, Massimo. See, yes, yes. Mm, I think is uh, the power consumption uh, between the two models of uh, relays is more similar. But uh, I leave uh, our attendees uh, to see this data uh, uh, from uh, from the data sheet of the the relay that uh, they can find uh, uh, on our website. So the power consumption says more or less the same. Yes. Okay. So of course, if you did not answer properly, just uh, retype your question, or maybe you can send later on email. We can uh, call you. We can have another chat. And what is uh, the What is it? What What is the potential free contact in relay, Massimo? Yes, I think our attendee intent uh, to have the information from uh, uh, rating. Contact rating of the smart relay. At, uh, uh, yeah, contact. 
Yeah, so this data is available on the instruction manual, but usually uh, for a C application, uh, we have uh, uh, five ampere at uh, two, 250 volt C. And uh, for uh, DC uh, application, we must respect the DC load breaking curve uh, present uh, in the in the instruction manual. Okay, so it's uh, five amps. We do have also ten amps on some application or some relays. So, but basically, the five amps is uh, the uh, power the. Uh, our rate, current rate for our race, and the most used. So the last question is, uh, for which application or vendor valves, these do, do double coil valve really are used? Which application maximum we can say that we use uh, this uh, double coil valve relay? Uh, what kind of application? Yeah. So basically, it's a refinery. From my experience, there yeah, is yes. typical yeah. refinery. It's a refinery, yeah. yeah. Uh, really safe application, critical application, say in uh, radius Ardus area or critical where explosion is uh, around the corner. Explosion is around the corner. So I think we answer. Maybe we can give you more details about that, uh, looking at the our um, if you can remember later, maybe send us an email, we can uh, send you some reference, dedicated reference for that. Okay, we have another one. How the Modbus interface for a mutual relay to DCS to be done? Is it through some intermediate multiplexer? No, it's not necessary because uh, our relay can be can be directly to connect to do the, the PLC system. Uh, if the PLC system has a master, because our our relay have the possibility to to work with the slave, and uh, inside we can uh, pro program a different address for each uh, each relay. It's a Modbus uh, Modbus slave, so it's yeah. One, two, three, four, up to 156 uh, address we can have in the same uh, line. Okay, we can go through. So there is another question, but let's leave it later the answer. Okay, we are here. So the last one is the Honeywell DCS, and in this case, the solenoid valves, and as usual. We have a possibility. You see, in this case, we have also the uh, is a single phase load interaction. Is a possibility you can um, say you can um, use uh, on our summer delays or hours because you have just one uh, wire to the load. If you are talking about long distance from the cabinet control cabinet and the valve, you you have to wire it, and in this case, just one wire it will be necessary for driving the valve. Um, I can uh, have in this case also power supply fault, open short circuit, internal coil fault, and mode bus interface as uh, uh, features. Okay, so I leave Massimo to the software and post part. It is also interesting for you because you can discover what is not possible with the standard relay than what is possible in, uh, indeed with the smart one. Massimo, is there a talk now? Yes, thank you, Andrea. Uh, the 5294S uh, can be also configured when the parameters to be monitored are really specific. So and uh, the alarm triggering is not achievable with standard monitor relays. It's also possible to monitor the status of the loop in real time with the configurator, hardware configurator. 
to a dedicated software called SWC1519 and a small hardware interface, we can completely configure the module. For example, we can set up a window in which the value of voltage on the load, current flow in the load and impedance of the load are included. In this way, when the measurement of the variable in the field come out of this window, of configured value, an alarm is reported to the system. And uh, next, through the configuration software, it's also possible uh, uh, to read uh, in real time the value of voltage current along the impedance. A first example is what we see in the slide, where an uh, impedance solenoid bulb of about uh, 100 ohm is monitored together with its current. In this specific case, the failure of a coil inside the relay causes redundancy to be lost, but the relay signals uh, the anomaly while uh, still maintaining the energized loop. This is possible thanks to the contact methods inside the relay, which guarantees us high process availability. Next, in a large industrial compounds, raffinery, etc., double coil valves are normally controlled by a single digital output driver. Mm -hmm. The double coil uh, avoids uh, full strips keeping the system active even if one of the two fails. In this context, the D5294S is again an optimal solution because it can detect the opening of the single valve coil. Hence, providing predictive diagnostic for prompt maintenance while keeping high availability. Next. Uh, here we have uh, uh, an example uh, um, of monitoring and firing gas system where a partial short circuit affects the winding of the solenoid. This is the typical case where the setting of a specific threshold within uh, which the loop, uh, uh, so, sorry, the load impedance volume must fall can be monitored. When the impedance value falls outside the set value, an alarm is detected. Note uh, that the 5294S can set the impedance value between 5 ohm up to 50 kilo ohms. And uh, we see the modbus interface. Uh, the really what, Massimo, mod wait, wait, Massimo. Sorry? Uh, as, Massimo, we, as long as we have some uh, questions about the software, okay. we will answer sure. that. Sure. Um, yeah, is this software part of access monitoring system to be loaded for diagnostic? Oh, well, the thing is, uh, um, the software is, uh, is more for laboratory applications uh, um, because we can, uh, can let's say make a test, a real test, we can uh, uh, connect the PC to the, to the, to the relays, we can detect what is happening and decide and uh, say set the real values for uh, alarming and so on. That is uh, the main purpose, it's not real uh, software we use in the applications. And there was another one for the relays, uh, this software free of course, in, if the smart relay are purchased, yes, the software is free of charge and uh, downloadable from our uh, website. Yeah, perfect. Uh, okay, so you see that. And there was another one, I think I'm not able to find the, this uh, question because it's in the middle. Do you see, Massimo? Sorry? Do you see the open question? Uh, yes, in case many relays are installed uh, and conveniently monitored through Modbus links, uh, yes, it is uh, one of the possibility that offer uh, Modbus uh, function uh, uh, to monitor constantly uh, many, many relays and uh, 
combine the, and collect the, the information from the field. Last one is what wiring changes requirements need to be done on the host system to do remote diagnostic. A smart laser have a local diagnostic alarm such as LED audible. Well answer Massimo. Uh, the, the smart reader is have no uh, the local diagnostic uh, alarm. Uh, or, or, sorry, uh, is ever uh, led. Uh, uh, okay, in, uh, inside uh, the, the relay, in the front of the relay, that uh, communicate uh, a visible uh, fault uh, in the field. When the relay detects uh, a fault, uh, uh, a red LED is uh, light up uh, on the front of the relay. Or, or the relay. Yeah. And of course, in, for the, 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 the wiring, of course, you need to connect the digital output from the relay to your digital input. Yes. Can you? Or you can have the mirroring. Yeah. So you don't, need a special, uh, you don't need a special wiring because you already is a mirroring on your digital output, which is driving the relay. Or again, uh, via mode bus. Well, via mode bus, exactly. OK. Then I can so we close the question so we can go to the next slide Massimo which is the Modbus interface okay thank you uh, the relay mod modules uh, D5294S uh, support the Modbus communication over an RS485 cable up to 127 modules can be arranged in a multi-drop network and monitor configured by a single master unit, as shown in the following picture. Each slave contains a table of parameters. Each of them is univocally identified through an address. And when request makes available its value for reading writing. Yeah, we say that uh, just a Modbus can give you exact detail of what uh, is happening with your relays. Okay. Yeah. Also, you can detect the single, you can uh, have information about the single fault happening on your relay. Yes. Uh, in the next slide, uh, what are the advantages of using a Modbus communication? Uh, with a single Modbus uh, RS485 interface, it's possible to uh, connect and communicate with all the relay present on the same bus. Multi-drop multi connection is possible and communication can cover a distance of uh, up to 1,200 meters. Another advantage is the possibility of not using a dedicated digital input system to monitor alarms. And uh, this allows us to have significant saving in terms of cost and uh, real-time information of the time, uh, type of alarm and uh, on the health of the load and the line. It's also possible to mod us a complete uh, remote programming of the relay. And uh, for the conclusion, uh, I leave uh, the words to uh, Andrea. Okay, so let's say uh, we are uh, almost at the end. Thank you for waiting to now. So we conclusion is that uh, we have uh, on the smart relay call to call the contact C3235. So the C3 relays are uh, tubes set away from a tooth. We already say that the diagnosis is the CL2, but it's not interfering with the uh, safety function. So safety function is uh, completely independent from the um, diagnostic. Um, so the diagnostic here for 52, 94, 95, so are configurable, configurable really for voltage or load. You can, uh, set the voltage, the threshold for the voltage, for the current, for the resistance that is a patented uh, feature. Uh, the leakage from those are the coil integrity and the internal fault. The coil integrity is uh, uh, dedicated for the dual coil uh, valve. 
Why there are other two, like uh, 50, 96, 97, those are only uh, examples of our products, of course, that are offering uh, a uh, low level of diagnostic. So you can just detect uh, uh, open short for the line, open short for the load, and uh, uh, access for power supply. So some of them support also the bus uh, RS-485. Okay, interface and uh, are compatible uh, with the digital output card line monitoring pass testing from the DCS. So you know that in some application, in some DCS, you can exclude, uh, you can uh, stop uh, the pass uh, testing from the output. Uh, in some other notes, but it doesn't matter because their our relays are compatible with that. Uh, Pass testing, or those pass testing is filtered by the relays, is not uh, activating or flickering the output or wanted. And uh, we can give it an extra feature like the fault mirroring for the digital. I think we almost finished. Maybe there's another question from uh, one attendee. Yes. Is there a redundant mod bus link possible? Uh, is is a good question. I I think uh, I think uh, yes, but uh, but it's not simple to give an answer uh, now. I prefer to answer via mail because uh, uh, I prefer give uh, uh, to our attendees some information uh, uh, about uh, this uh, question. Okay, we'll uh, answer you by email later on. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we, let me see if we have, we did everything. I think. Yeah, if I remember, we have uh, a question from, uh, uh, from our attendee in the registration uh, session. Yes. Yes, there was a question regarding the, the diodes. If uh, we have to install a diodes to say to protect uh, uh, the, 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 the coil for the relays or protect the digital output from unwanted voltage. Yes, uh, the diode in, uh, in parallel to the coil uh, is always necessary to protect uh, the DO card from spikes generated by the coil itself. Uh, I want to remember that uh, a coil is uh, the comparable to uh, uh, inductive load. Um, this uh, kind of load must be protected uh, because uh, uh, this kind of load uh, usually generates a spike versus uh, the system. And uh, we can say that uh, in uh, GM uh, international relays, uh, mm, to place an external diode in parallel to the coil is not necessary because all the internal coils uh, are already protected by a diode in parallel. So every, every relays have also inside uh, the diodes. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you for we finish. Yeah, there is a last poll. Thank you if you wanna just uh, rate this uh, webinar, and then we'll finish if I don't see any further questions. Okay, I think we almost finished. Thank you very much for everybody for also for your vote. Was very, very proud of that.
And uh, thank you very much. Uh, I stop here the polls. And I uh, remember you, our country details, you want to send us an email if you want to have more details uh, or other information, don't hesitate to write us or to call us. And I remember you that there are also others, uh, other webinars. Uh, for the moment, tomorrow will be our last for this week and we start again the 25th of August. We have a short break, but we start with the other um, topics like power supply, safety power supplies, like uh, CL uh, topics uh, in uh, CL calculation, uh, factor safety management, uh, CL manual, uh, barriers versus uh, isolators and so on. You can just register yourself and you will be on our webinars. Thank you very much. Thank you, Massimo. Thank you, Andrea, and thank you all uh, our attendees. Thank you. See you. See you. Bye-bye.